If you haven't heard already last week, Elon Musk announced a chip invented by his company Neuralink, making very bold claims like treating all these diseases, what even sounds like a science fiction, summoning your Tesla or communicating through telepathy. Can the Neuralink chip allow you to summon your Tesla telepathically? Uh, definitely, of course. How this can be achieved and also would this chip be able to control your brain? But what might even sound more surprising to you is that these things have been achieved already before. They are not entirely new. The Neuralink device is based on two concepts, recording from the brain and stimulating the brain. But why is it the brain that gets always blamed for all these diseases? The brain, as any other organ, is composed of cells. And unlike the common perception, those cells are not only neurons, as the brain has 85 billion neurons as well as around the same number of other cell types. Those other types are collectively called glial cells and recently they have been found to be very important in creating the right neuronal connections. Those neurons communicate and transmit information through electrical impulses. A group of neurons that are stimulated together to create a certain function is called a neural circuit. This brain receives input and gives output. It receives input from all your sensory organs, your eyes, ears, limbs, skin, through electrical impulses that create a neuronal pattern in the brain. This pattern gets translated to an image, sound, pain, and then the brain sends back electrical impulses through the spinal cord to motor neurons to your limbs to take actions or movement. In other words, your brain generates your reality. How you see, feel, and interact with the world happens through patterns of neuronal signaling. So when a damage happens in the brain or in the neurons transmitting to and from it, these diseases can happen. But if the neuronal signaling occurs through electrical impulses, then perhaps if we can record these impulses, maybe we can predict the behaviors based on the actions happening in the brain. In other words, read the mind. This idea was firstly developed in 1924 by the German scientist Hans Berger, who invented the electroencephalography, tying electrodes to the skull and then recording the electrical signal from the brain on a piece of paper. It was not until 1973 that a UCLA professor named Jack Vidal came up with a great idea. Vidal thought if when you close your hands like this, a brain signal specific to this behavior happens then why don't we record the signal and feed it into a computer the computer would then relate the brain signal into this behavior step two when you think about this behavior again the computer would decode the signal from your brain and then feed an order to a robotic arm to mimic the behavior making you control the robotic arm with your thoughts vidal then coined the term brain computer interface which later became brain-machine interface. In four years, Vidal successfully could make a person move a cursor on a computer screen through a maze by only thinking about it. But a challenge that Vidal described was extracting the neuronal signals from the background noise produced by the electroencephalograph. Later, scientists could create an algorithm to filter the noise and get a better signal. So by 1999, Yang Dan team at the University of California, Berkeley could reproduce images seen by a cat by recording the signals in the cat's brain in the area that is stimulated by the retina. The field continued to slowly grow until the year 2000, when Miguel Nicolilas and his team conducted a breakthrough experiment. Remember this name, as he is going to be the mind behind many of the concepts 
in this field and also behind the concepts used to create the Neuralink chip. And by the end of his achievements, you will certainly fall in love with him as I did. Nicolilas trained the monkey to use a joystick and move a cursor on a computer screen to play a game. If he wins the game, he gets food as reward. Simultaneously, the brain activity of the monkey was getting recorded and fed into a computer that controlled another joystick. The computer was making the separate joystick mimic the monkey's behavior. Then the monkey's joystick was taken away from him. He had to imagine moving the cursor on the screen to get the reward. And to everybody's shock, the monkey could with his imagination control the joystick that was in another room and move the cursor and get the reward. By 2008 and with the rapid development of the field, Andrew Schwartz at the University of Petersburg and his team could make a monkey use his thoughts to control a robotic arm and feed himself. Nicolilas wanted to know for how long can he record from a monkey's brain without affecting his health. The team then designed this chip to record wirelessly from the monkey's brain. He went in 2010 to Africa to watch the World Cup and he also implanted a chip in an African monkey and left it to record. He went back to his lab in Duke University and the chip kept recording for 7 years until 2017. He was receiving recordings from a monkey in another continent. After this, Nicolilas wanted to take it a step further and push this limit. So he thought, what if we make the monkey control a very complex object like a car? And he did it. By now, you are probably thinking that this is all cool and everything, but useless. Where's the clinical applications out of this? Well, in 2012, a lady could actually use these principles to control the same robotic arm that the monkey could control to feed herself. And as every genius dreamer out there, Nicolilas wanted to make a paraplegic with a spinal cord injury that we haven't seen anybody walk out of it open the ceremony for the Soccer World Cup with kicking a ball. So he gathered a team of scientists from all over the world and created a skeleton that the patient would control with his thoughts to make him walk again. And to all the dreamers out there with determination and hard work, great dreams do actually come true. This was only recording from the brain but in parallel, stimulating the brain was also very exciting. Stimulating the brain with electrical signals was firstly done by Jose Delgado in 1947, and he noticed a change in the vascular, thermal, and respiratory functions of the laboratory animals upon giving electrical signal to the frontal lobe in the brain. Short time after, researchers immediately started experimenting with this method in treating psychiatric patients. Around the same time, the Portuguese physician Igaz Moniz gets awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for pioneering operations on psychiatric patients where he ablates parts of their brain leading to a remarkable improvement in their aggressive behavior. People kept experimenting on these and the results were going pretty well, especially in Parkinsonism, where removing the pathological parts of the brain could actually stop the tremor. Until an interesting observation was made in 1987, when a scientist during a surgery observed that the high electrical stimulation to map the brain could actually stop the tremors doing the same effect without the surgery. This pushed the scientific community to replace the surgery with the electrical stimulation of the brain, developing a technique that was later called deep brain stimulation. It was approved by the FDA for treating tremors in 1997. This technique significantly could improve the lives of many patients of major neurological disorders. But how? Well, 
Although these diseases have different reasons, the end results in the brain are very similar. The signs and symptoms of these diseases happen due to disruption of the respective neural circuit. For example, disorders in the motor circuits could lead to Parkinsonism. Disorders of the limbic circuits lead to depression. Disorders of the reward circuits lead to addiction. So the end result is similar despite the different reasons. It seems that giving external electrical stimulation to these circuits restores their normal function. The mechanism is yet to be clear. Nevertheless, it has helped 160,000 people over the world to live a better life. Despite that this technique has been really promising, it is still very challenging. Remember, the brain has billions of neurons and a lot of neural circuits. It's not easy to find the right neural circuit to stimulate. Not to forget the side effects of inserting that thing into your brain. Other than deep brain stimulation, we mentioned at the beginning that the spinal cord transmits the signal from the brain. So there is also spinal cord stimulation to alleviate the chronic pain and other implants were made to treat blindness and hearing loss. Now, if recording from the brain could predict the behaviors and stimulating the brain could treat all these diseases, imagine the potential if you can do both. And here comes a great team of scientists and engineers that used 100 years of research to change from this device and this device into the Neuralink chip. Neuralink is a device about the size of a large coin. The chip will replace a chunk of the skull radiating the electrodes into the brain and will record from neurons and stimulate neurons. The material of the electrodes had to be chosen carefully to be compatible with the brain and resist the corrosive environment with minimal thickness. Imagine slicing a hair strand into 20 pieces. This is how thick the fibers of Neuralink would be. For this, it's extremely complicated to be inserted into the brain with human hands. So Neuralink brilliantly developed a robot to solve this problem. The robot is equipped with lights and cameras to be able to insert the electrodes very fast and with high accuracy to avoid vessels and prevent bleeding and at the same time record from distributed brain regions. The chip will be linked to your phone and smart devices via Bluetooth through an application that Neuralink will create to let you control the chip and receive the data from it. Now we saw three pigs in the presentation. The first one had a chip implanted and then removed to prove that you can implant a chip and then remove it or get an upgrade. The second one had the implant for two months to show the safety. And also in the presentation, we saw the recordings of the neurons in real time. Those recordings were able to predict the position of the joints, which proves that the decoding of the signaling is also very accurate. The third one had more than one implant to prove that you could have multiple implants and not suffer any side effects. Now to the most important part. How would this chip treat all these diseases? Well, since this chip is a lot better in recording and stimulating the brain than the previous devices, then the principles are still the same. Hearing loss, for example, can be treated by having a microphone that receives the input and then passes the signal to the chip. The chip would then stimulate the regions in the brain that lead to hearing. Similar principle can be used with blindness. You could have a camera, the camera would pass the signal to the chip and the chip would stimulate the vision areas in the brain. Which means we have a gateway to compensate for any sensory loss in the body. What about spinal cord injuries? Those are untreatable. Well, Elon suggested what he called a neuronal shunt, 
where two chips will be inserted, one into the brain and one into the spinal cord after the injury. The chip in the spinal cord will receive stimulus from limbs and pass it on to the chip in the brain to receive sensations and vice versa the brain chip will receive stimulus from the brain pass it on to the spinal cord chip to stimulate movement if this were to be achieved it will be the first time in history to make paraplegic patients regain walking without the aid of machines despite the miraculous potential that this might have the fibers only cover a thin layer of the cortex in the brain it would be necessary to go into more depth in the brain to be able to reach areas that can treat addiction, depression, or anxiety. Now to the exciting stuff. Would this chip make you able to summon your Tesla car? Well, we already saw a monkey doing it. Yeah, it's very easy. That's an easy one. The monkey was driving the car with his mind without the chip, with other techniques. How would this be different here? The chip will receive the recordings from your brain that you want to summon the Tesla car and wirelessly send it to the Tesla computer to decode it into what you want and then the Tesla car will come to you. What about telepathy? Can you communicate using your mind with other people? Can you send thoughts and receive thoughts? Maybe draw a picture in another person's mind or maybe even send a feeling instead of trying to express it with words that would be really fascinating actually this was about to be achieved before by guess who i told you you will fall in love with him in 2014 nicolilas and his team made a brain brain interface where they had two mice connected to each other with electrodes one mouse is directed by light to touch a spot in the cage to get the reward while the other mouse don't get the light however surprisingly both mice could touch the position and get the reward this indicated that there is some sort of connection happening through the electrodes, some sort of mind communication between the two minds. While I didn't find reports that this happened in humans, this experiment opens the possibility that it might happen in the future, maybe with Neuralink. Now to the big question, would this chip be able to control your brain? Well, a change in mice behavior was induced in research before. Hallucination, hunger, aggressive behavior, even in humans, stimulating the brain could induce behavioral changes, like what happens with drugs or alcohol. And also it was observed with deep brain stimulation, so it could be observed with Neuralink. But at the same time, it is really complicated to control something like logical thinking and thoughts in human brains. Remember, these are billions of neurons and very complicated neuronal circuits. And it's not really easy like that to control them. But who knows? Despite leaving many open-ended questions, this device certainly allows us for the first time to gain a gentle real-time access to the brain which might help us to reveal mysteries like consciousness or answer existential questions like do we have free will or enhance the human race and gain more advantages but what is certain is that this device might end the suffering and restore the normal life of many many people see you in the next episode Hi, Cooper. <gasps>